What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. Recently I've been working on compositing the shots in the last video we released where we created that dynamic grass dancing creature and in addition to creating those full tutorials on how you can create those dynamic effects, I wanted to share in a few videos a little bit of the compositing process I went through in order to create some of the final visual effect shots. In this short video I wanted to share how I actually reused some of the dragonfly elements from one shot and composited them into others. A lot of the time we think we have to start a shot from scratch and sometimes that is the case. I think if you have to start a shot from scratch and render a whole bunch of new elements for it, but sometimes we can actually reuse elements to create a much more efficient and streamlined workflow. So this is the shot I'm going to be going through today. It's just these dragonflies kind of flying by the camera and then you can see some of them in the background as well. So kind of a cool shot. I love adding these particle systems with our Spiderfy add-on. And you can see I have a few different layers going on here and I'll go through these in a second. But the main thing I wanna talk about is how this composite compares to our output inside of Blender. So if we go to Blender really quick, this is our scene setup. I'll go ahead and view through our camera. We've 3D tracked the shot as usual. And if I select our Spiderfy void system that has the dragonflies on it, you'll notice that there are a lot less dragonflies in the scene here in comparison to our final composite. And the reason for that is because we're reusing elements from some other shots. So all I've done in this specific Blender scene is created one Spiderfy void particle system and kind of animated the goal going throughout 3D space to create the foreground dragonflies. Because a lot of the time what's in the foreground needs to be a little bit more precisely designed for your shot than those elements which are in your background. So I've just rendered out these dragonflies on a PNG sequence and you know it's pretty basic scene setup here just have a background projection for some environmental lighting uh, have a little top light going on here with an area light and then a little ground plane and then I've also created kind of some cutouts of our character to act as a holdout mask when the actual dragonfly system flies behind our character here we want to actually automate that masking so that when it flies behind our character in Z space it's cut out from the scene so it's a fairly simple blender scene with just one dragonfly element but when we go back to our composite you'll notice that I have some more elements in the background. So what I've actually done here is for these dragonflies in the background, these three layers right here, I've actually just grabbed these dragonfly elements from other shots. So for example, this is an earlier shot from the edit. You can see we just have some dragonflies kind of flying from off camera and then swarming around in the middle of our scene here. So I've rendered out this element specifically for this scene and another element I rendered out is in this shot right here. We have some dragonflies in the center of our scene here as well. Just kind of a basic dragonfly system we've added to this shot as well. And then obviously we've color corrected and composited it into this specific shot. And I've 3D tracked it for this scene as well. So what I've done for this shot is I actually reused those elements and put them into the deep background. So you can see that originally we didn't have these dragonflies here in the background. We just had these two dragonfly foreground elements. You can see if I isolate this element by itself, it's a nice effect, but it's definitely not as immersive as that final result where we have those elements in the background. All I've done is I've just taken a few of these background elements, I've just added them to our shot in the deep background. And you can see if I just isolate these elements, this is what we're actually adding to the background. And of course I've added some camera lens blur and some color correction on each of these elements. Because that background is more blurry, we have to match that data within these elements. But these are just the same elements that we composited into those previous shots. I've just repositioned them into the background and then added a little bit of blur to them to composite them into our scene. And because the lighting of these shots is so similar and the perspective change is so minimal for this 3D track, it actually ends up working pretty nicely to create our final result. So these two elements, background three and background two, are from that first shot. And then I've used dragons background three from our second shot here where they come down from the ceiling essentially. And I've populated that on the right side of our frame here. So you can see them in the deep background on the right and left side of frame. And to me that just created a much more immersive environment without having to render more elements for this specific shot. Anyways guys, that is it for this video. Just a little quick tip, don't be afraid to reuse your elements if the lighting and general perspective of your render matches the shot you're working on. I hope this video was helpful. As I mentioned, I will be doing a full tutorial on our dynamic grass creature, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you're interested in more visual effects content, and I'll see you next time.